James, go to sleep. You have school tomorrow. No, tell me a bedtime story. Okay then. A fairy tale? How about a leading case on the directing mind theory of corporate liability? Okay. Once upon a time, a big supermarket named Tesco was selling wash powders for sale. They were selling it at a price lower than usual, $2 instead of $3. Everyone in town knew about the sale. It was on TV and in the newspaper. Mrs. Rogers worked for Tesco, and she was sorting out all the wash powders so that the customers can buy them. However, there were none left, so she put out the normal wash powders, which were $3. What happens next? Well, James, there were still advertisements that said they were selling the wash powders at a lower price. Mrs. Rogers did the bad thing of not telling her manager, Mr. Clements, that there were no more $2 wash powders. Oh, no! Along came Mr. Cohn, an old man who also found out there were cheap wash powders at his local Tesco. Little did he know there were no more, and he would have to pay $3 instead of $2. Mr. Cohn went to Tesco to get some wash powder. However, he was very upset that he had to pay $3 instead of the $2 which the advertisement said. That isn't fair. Did Tesco get in trouble? Well, they kind of did. Because Mr. Cohn was very upset, he took this to court, so Tesco was in big, big trouble. You see, James, there's an important document called the Trade Descriptions Act, written in 1968, which makes sure that companies such as Tesco don't mislead their customers like Mr. Cohn. In fact, in that important document, it states specifically that if any person offering to supply any goods gives any indication likely to be taken as an indication that the goods are being offered at a price less than that at which they are in fact being offered, he shall be guilty of an offence. So, that means that Mr. Clements would get in trouble? You would think so. However, it's different for companies like Tesco. A lot of the times, companies are liable for the actions of their employees. We call this corporate liability. Do you remember the case of Bolton Engineering Company versus Graham I told you a few weeks ago? I remember that. Well, the judge in that case said that a company is like a human body. It has a brain and nerve center which controls what it does. It also has hands which hold the tools and act in accordance with directions from the center. Some of the people in the company are mere servants and agents who are nothing more than hands to do the work and cannot be said to present the mind or will. Others are directors and managers who represent the directing mind and will of the company and control what it does. So, Tesco shouldn't get in trouble? That's right, James. In fact, the judge said that for Tesco to not be liable for Mr. Clement's actions, the person who acts is not speaking or acting for the company. He is acting as the company and his mind which directs his acts as the mind of the company. If it is a guilty mind, then that guilt is the guilt of the company. In order for Tesco to stay away from being liable, they had to prove that the so-called false advertising was due to a mistake or the actions of another person, or that they had due diligence to avoid a mistake like that. What is due diligence? Due diligence is where you make sure that you take all the right and necessary steps to avoid mistakes. For example, Tesco had a very strict and proper system for advertising. If Mr. Clements had known that there were no more stock of the $2 wash powder, he would not have kept the signs up. I see. What happens in the end? The judge agreed that Mr. Clements was another person and was therefore not the directing mind of the company. Also, because Tesco did their best to avoid mistakes like this, Tesco was not liable for the situation. It wasn't the company's fault after all. And they lived happily ever after? Ha ha ha, I guess so. It's time to go to sleep now. Good night, James.